In this tutorial, you're going to get to practice your JavaScript skills by learning to code a temperature converter. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to learn to code a temperature converter using a bit of JavaScript and a few HTML and CSS elements. Before we start, if you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so that you don't miss out on any future updates. Okay, so we're going to learn how to code a temperature converter in this tutorial and it's going to be really basic and we're just going to use the two temperatures Celsius or centigrade depending on where you are from in the world and Fahrenheit. So we've got two input boxes here and we can put a number into each one uh, and it should update the other one. For example, if I wanted to find out what 20 degrees Celsius was, I just type that into that box and the Fahrenheit input updates automatically and you notice that we can actually adjust these and by adjusting one or the other it should update the other corresponding value. So it's not the prettiest bit of UI in the world but uh, it's quite functional and it's this, this tutorial is mainly focusing on how to uh, manipulate those elements using JavaScript. So let's dive in by creating a blank project. So I've just gone over to CodePen and created a blank pen but uh, feel free to follow along in your own text editor if you find that easier. So our first job is to create some HTML markup and these are going to be the uh, elements that actually contain the, the input boxes that will be holding our values. Um, so I'm just going to first of all create a, a div and I'll call this uh, temperatures. And all that will be is just a, a wrapper container that we can apply some styling to uh, a little bit later on. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create uh, another two divs and I'm going to give them a class of input fields. Okay, and these will hold the actual input boxes. And the reason I've given them that class, again, is just for styling so that I can select them with some CSS later on. And uh, we actually need some input boxes in there as well. So let's put those in. And I'm going to actually put them with a type of number uh, so that, because obviously we're going to be using numbers to convert our temperatures. We don't really want any text in there or anything else. And I'm just going to give this an ID and I'll first call this uh, Celsius. And I'll also create a corresponding label for that and the four attribute can be set to Celsius which is the idea of the input that we just created above. And I'm going to do the same thing for Fahrenheit as well. And you can see that's now given us two input boxes. Uh, we didn't actually put any text in those labels which doesn't help. Uh, so let's go and add something in there just to denote which, uh, which input box is related to which uh, property. Okay, and there we have pretty much all the markup that we need. We've got our labels and our input boxes, and so we can actually put values into them, but we need to write some JavaScript to actually get those values and do some transformations on them as well. So we'll focus on that next. So when working with uh, input boxes or indeed any other elements that are in your DOM, um, unless you're only going to be really accessing it once, um, it's probably a good idea to set up some variables that hold references to those elements so you don't have to keep doing a, a query selector, for example. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to create two variables that reference the input boxes for Celsius and Fahrenheit. So because our input boxes have got specific IDs, I can use the get element by ID function, which is uh, present on the document object and just pass in the ID of that. So I'm getting Celsius and Fahrenheit and I'm saving the values of those or at least the reference to those elements, those input boxes into a constant of Celsius and Fahrenheit. So now in our code, I can now access those elements just by referencing those variable names. So in order to get this update working where we type a value into either of those boxes and update the other one, we need to set up a couple of event listeners, which we'll do in a second. But first of all, let's create those functions that actually do the transformation from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So I'm going to create a function and assign it to a constant variable and I'll just call that uh, update Fahrenheit, for example. And I'll create a separate one for updating Celsius as well. So inside these functions, I'm actually going to access the DOM elements that we saved above. and I'm going to update the value which is stored in the input box itself. So for updating Fahrenheit, we want to access the Fahrenheit element and I can do that just by referencing that variable name and then access its value property. And now we can assign a, a value to that, which is going to be represented by some transformation of the Celsius value. Now to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, there's a bit of a formula for it. Uh, so once we know the Celsius value, uh, what we can actually do is if we multiply that by 9 divided by 5, 9 fifths, and then add 32 onto it. 
Um, because we're dealing with fractions here as well, so 9 over 5, we might get some uh, partial decimal numbers, so some floating point numbers. So what I'm actually going to do uh, is parse uh, that into a floating point number and wrap that around the, the calculation inside those brackets. Okay, so let's move on to updating the Celsius property. So uh, we'll do the same thing again. We just want to access that Celsius element and its value property. And we're going to access the Fahrenheit value, the value that's stored in that input box. And this time we're actually going to minus 32 from that. This is the uh, equation or the formula to actually uh, calculate Celsius values from Fahrenheit. And we do sort of the opposite thing here. We say 5 divided by 9 once we've done the subtraction. So those are our two formulas, our two functions that actually access each of the other two properties of the input boxes that we have and updates the other one's value. So I mentioned a moment ago we needed to uh, actually add eventlessness for when we are typing in that box or for when a value changes in one of those inputs. So let's do that now. So there we've got our two event listeners set up, one for each of the input boxes. And the event that I'm listening for is input. Uh, so there are a few different ones that you can listen for, such as like change or key down. Because we've got a type of number for our input, uh, it actually listens for any values that change in there, which is handy because for our number types of inputs, we actually get our up and down arrows to cycle through different values. So we're pretty much in a position where we can test this out now. So if we put in uh, 0 degrees Celsius, you can see we get 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which uh, if you do a quick Google just to double check is, is actually right. Uh, and we can actually use our buttons here to sort of go up and down. And let's check the other event listeners working as well. So if we say 0 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see we get a, a Celsius value back, which is based on that equation. Um, so one thing to note here as well is we've got uh, quite a lot of decimal points being returned here as well. So it might be a good idea to actually uh, set this to a fixed number of decimal places. Okay, so one way we could do that is uh, if we wrap our Celsius uh, value when it gets uh, calculated from Fahrenheit, uh, we first of all wrap it in a parse float so that we're uh, making sure that we've got a floating point number. Then we can add on the two fixed function on the end and pass in a value of two. And if we go to our Fahrenheit input box here and go back to zero, you can see we're getting uh, minus 17 again, but it's set it to a fixed value of two decimal places. So that's pretty much all we need to have for our JavaScript to get that working. And of course, if you had other temperatures or other values that you wanted to calculate, as long as you know the formula, you can just create another function, add another input box, and then set up the event listener for it too. So with that done, let's just finish off the project with a little bit of CSS, uh, just to make it a little bit easier to read and a bit neater. So the first thing I'm going to do is target the temperatures div that we uh, created to start off with. And I'm going to set a font size uh, to just to make things a little bit bigger and a bit easier to read. You'll notice that the text in the input doesn't actually update, so we'll need to target that separately. And I'll also put a bit of margin on here and set a maximum width for the container. And because we've got a margin of auto on the left and right, you can see it centers it almost for us in the page. The other thing I'm going to do is I want the actual input boxes, uh, all those input fields next to each other. So I'm just going to set the display property uh, to flex, use a flex box. And I'll just make sure that is the content is justified inside the container just by centering it. So the other thing I want to do is target those input fields, which is basically the div that wraps around the uh, input boxes. And I'm going to add a few styles to that. I'm going to say uh, margin top and bottom is zero, but let's put some on the left and right just to separate them out a bit. Make sure they've both got a flex property of one so that they take up 50% uh, of the uh, parent container exactly. And let's also align the text in the center. Again, you'll notice that the text inside the inputs hasn't changed, uh, so we will need to target that separately. And so let's do that for our final bit of CSS. So again, we'll align the text in the center. We'll just make sure it only takes up 50% of the actual parent container. Make the font size a little bit bigger. And then finally add some padding and a little bit of margin at the bottom, just so that the label is pushed away uh, ever so slightly, just so we can see that from there and make sure we spell margin bottom correctly there. So you can see that the de decimal places aren't appearing quite as they should be in the uh, Celsius one where we've got that uh, fractional calculation. 
So let's actually remove that uh, width restriction on there just so we've got a bit more space to play with. And finally, just over here in CodePen, I'm going to add in a Google font into the head. So if you're working in your text editor, you just put a, a link to the font in your head tag. And then we can just add that font uh, to our temperatures div so that all the text inside there uh, takes that Google font that we've loaded in. Okay, so there we have it. It's pretty much our completed temperature converter. Uh, let's just try it out one more time just to make sure it's still working okay. And let's uh, add some values into the Fahrenheit, for example. So if we can tell from 50 degrees Fahrenheit that that's 10 Celsius. And if we increment that just a little bit, you'll see that fractional uh, value in the Celsius field is still working. And we can easily read it. And it should work the other way around too if we go back to 32. Yep, so we can see that the the Fahrenheit value updates when we add, edit the Celsius input box. So there we have our completed temperature converter. I hope you learned a little bit about JavaScript and how you access elements in the DOM and update their values. We didn't do much about styling in this project, but feel free to go away and come up with something a little bit better looking. And if you do come up with something that's quite exciting, just drop it in the comments below. It'd be good to see your work based off of this base project. So that's it for this video. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and for future video updates, and I'll see you next time.